The new guidelines on how to manage unscheduled bleeding on HRT are available on the BMS website. A lot of you have reached out and I've been discussing these guidelines with colleagues who have worked so hard on these updates and I'm going to clarify the relevant points for you. Very quickly, just to recap, if you're taking estrogen HRT for the management of your perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal symptoms and you have a womb, you need to take progesterone alongside your estrogen to protect the lining of the womb against endometrial cancer. And it can be taken as tablets, marina coils. So it's this lining of the womb that we need to protect and also protect you against any unscheduled vaginal bleeding. There is now new progesterone dosing guidance for everyone on moderate to high dose estrogen. So have a look. This is on page 42 on the management of unscheduled bleeding on HRT. These updates have come about because for those women on high dose estrogen, so have a close look at that, the dose of equivalent micronized progesterone for adequate endometrial protection was previously uncertain. It has become clear that micronized progesterone is probably not as good as keeping the lining of the womb, so the endometrium, as thin as possible, therefore reducing the risk of unscheduled vaginal bleeding and also reducing the risk of endometrial hyperplasia. So for those on the highest dose of estrogen, so that's 100 micrograms of estrogen patch or equivalent, then micronized progesterone has now been changes and it's now recommended that the micronized progesterone is increased. That means for those on combined sequential HRT, the increased dose now on will be 300 milligrams instead of the 200 milligrams micronized progesterone that you would have taken two weeks out of every four weeks. For those on the continuous combined HRT, the increased dose will now, from now on be 200 milligrams instead of the 100 milligrams daily at bedtime. This advice will also apply to those taking micronized progesterone vaginally, which we sometimes do as an unlicensed option for some of our patients, especially those that can't tolerate the side effects of the progesterone. So looking at this might make you feel really anxious, but there is no need to panic. If you're not having any unscheduled bleeding, all of this change can wait until your next HRT review. If you're now thinking that you need to have a look at your progesterone alongside your estrogen therapy and you might not want to go higher on your eutrogestan, so micronized progesterone dose, then it might be worth looking at other options, including changing to a 11 gestural IUS, such as a marina or Levacert. So the DFSRH website recently has now recognized that Levacert and uh, Benelixia also provide a recommendation duration for endometrial protection as part of HRT. So for five years, this can act as your HRT component, as the progesterone component, providing you endometrial protection. And so far, the British Menopause Society recognises that even if you've got a coil in, such as a Marina or Benelixia or Levacert, then you can go on higher doses of oestrogen up to 100 micrograms quite safely and you don't need added protection because the coil itself is providing you enough endometrial protection and also protecting you against unscheduled bleeding. If you're watching this and you don't have a wound because you've had a hysterectomy and it was removed due to endometriosis, and you're taking estrogen and progesterone, so combined HRT, then the dose of progesterone will need to be individually assessed and discussed between you and your GP. Again, this can wait until your next routine review. Finally, this new prescribing advice on progesterone dosing for all those patients on moderate to high dose estrogen will take time for clinicians in primary and secondary care to sort out. If anything, please don't panic. Just watch out for any vaginal bleeding. And if anything worries you, then please just phone your doctor or wait till your next routine appointment to have a discussion with them. As always, leave your comments below and I'll try and answer as many questions as possible.